can't define Texting from a distance, better all the time
now we're going to talk about the music we hear on the radio, or rather the music we don't hear on the radio. Are we being conditioned by radio producers and DJs into liking what they want us to like? Do they actually stifle a lot of the stuff we do want to hear because they don't think it's good for us? With me is Tony Wilson, a television journalist who in his spare time is one of the people behind Factory Records, one of the new independent labels. Radio 1 G DJ Paul Burnett and Steve Morris from Joy Division. Steve, I'd like to ask you the first question. As a member of an up-and-coming band, do you think you get a fair deal from the radio? Not really, no. And why do you think this is? Well, by the radio, I assume you're referring to Radio 1. Well, the only times that our records have actually been played on Radio 1 has been late at night on the John Peel show and uh, once on uh, the Mike Reed show on the Saturday on the Manchester special. Yeah. I'm sure Steve would be interested to hear how discs are chosen for airplay. Do you, you yourself have any choice, Paul? Uh, yes, we do with just the rec record of the week, you know, that we put our name to. So it's a very limited choice, see? No, uh, I was just going to say that uh, we do have an influence on the selection of records that go up to the uh, playlist meeting, which is uh, four producers who sit down once a week and submit records which they all play and listen to. And if you have a good rapport with your producer, you can have quite a strong influence on the... Uh, is it not true, though, that the majority of people actually on this playlist committee are middle-aged trendies? Uh, that has been said, it has been said. Uh, it's unfair, because by saying that, you're as guilty of, uh, you know, if you believe that, uh, you're as guilty of prejudice as much as people who believe that youngsters are yobs and what have you. Uh, because... Well, Tony, do you think that's prejudice? Do you think the people have got the finger on the pulse? No, um, I think you should let Paul finish what he was saying, because he'll never talk to you again. No, they haven't. They haven't got the foggiest idea in the world what's going on, the, most of them. But uh, there are some good ones, and I think we want you to define the difference between Radio 1 and commercial radio. The funniest thing in this country has been that Radio 1, and Top of the Pops to some extent, has been slightly progressive, and one can thank it. I mean, at least, you know, Top of the uh, Peel plays it and stuff like that. But commercial radio, to my mind, has been the, the real abject. I mean appalling, empty, vacant, depressing, non-sort of area of communications. And that was what was meant to replace the pirate radio stations. The last four years, if there had been an alternative radio station to take the music that was happening, what's happened the last four years, we'd be, we'd be in a different world now. Well, how do you view the playlist system? I view the playlist system as being incredibly important if you want to hit record. In fact, if you want to hit record, the commercial stations, everything is irrelevant. What is relevant is the choice of a Radio 1 producer, whether he likes the record or not. I find the fact that many record reps have to take their records, their singles, out of picture sleeves and put them in white bags. Anything with a picture sleeve is immediately punk and is discarded. This is the story, I've, one of the stories I've heard. I'm sure you'll deny it, Paul. Is but, that uh, fair criticism? Uh, I don't know about that. I suppose it's, uh, it's valid that it's possible that somebody looking at a sleeve will immediately condemn it as whatever the sleeve seems to indicate is in that, uh, which is obviously to be avoided. I suppose it's just a safety device, really, to make sure that that doesn't happen. That's all. Yes, it's just it's probably true. I don't. It, it is. I mean, the, the the basic problem with the attitude is that radio, the 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 most appalling aspect of it is what I think Roger Day of Piccadilly Radio once said in a BBC Two documentary: "We like to play nice, pleasant music to fill out the space between the adverts," and that is a definition of the appalling nature of commercial radio. Radio One isn't as bad. They're into the music, but they like music which reassures and which makes you feel calmer or is pleasant in a sense. A lot of the criticisms that we've uh, suffered ha have been. Uh, uh, aimed at Radio 1 about a year ago. Uh, I, I like to think there's been a, a great change at Radio 1 in the last year. I, I agree with that, but do you think they'll ever play your records? <coughs> doubtful. 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 But why... I Quite mean, agree, it is doubtful. Is there an automatic right that you have when you bring a record out, that it should get played on Radio 1? I mean, you've If it's a brilliant record, if it's better well, than sure, most yeah. of the dross that's around, I mean, and, and there are records which are better than most of the dross that is around that don't get played because they are slightly unsettling. For the simple reason that they come from somewhere slightly deeper within the soul than the level of a pure hit factory. And those things don't get played. I mean, I appreciate, I think Cliff's latest single is a work of genius, a perfect pop song. But this lot are doing the same kind of thing. They're using melody and rhythm in a, in a hypnotic way, which is what makes a hit single. But because it's unsettling and slightly sinister and gothic, it won't be played, which seems a shame.